not everything is new under the sun. Uh, not everything is unprecedented. I think that's what history can do for us. History can, history can help us to see patterns. I wrote a book called Embers of War. It's really a book about how the long and bloody struggle for Vietnam happened. Embers, as you know, suggests a dying fire, but one that can, can be revived. And what we're seeing here in this story about the struggle for Vietnam is the French war and the defeat of the French, and then the American war that follows emerging very much from that struggle. My early research had focused very much on the period of heavy U.S. escalation. And in the course of doing that early research, I became more and more interested in learning about what came before. I really became almost obsessed with the desire to go back, to do archival research, walk the battlefields, interview survivors, really dig into that French war, and before that, the Second World War, and tell it in a book, tell that story in a book. What I want to try to do is explain how it is that two Western powers, first France and then the United States, lost their way in Vietnam despite possessing massive military superiority. How did they get themselves involved and why did we get the result that we got? What I want to do as a historian is to bring a reader in, to give a reader a sense of the broader context, a sense of both change over time, but also continuity over time. I want the reader to have a sense of the key personalities, what Charles de Gaulle on the French side, what Ho Chi Minh on the Vietnamese side, John F. Kennedy, what they were really thinking, what drove them, what made them proceed in the way that they did in this struggle? I also want to give a sense of the deeper forces that also drive the history. It was about the North-South struggle, that is to say the struggle between European imperialism in its autumn phase and revolutionary nationalism. But it was also East-West. It was also about the Cold War how to combine attention to those deeper forces, those structural forces, with a focus on these really quite fascinating personalities was something that I tried to do. It's a certain line, I guess, that I tried to walk. A sobering finding in the course of my research is that French leaders and later American leaders escalated, fought, perpetuated a war that they didn't really believe in. I don't think that French leaders and then American uh, decision makers really ultimately believed in this thing, and yet they continued it year after bloody year. Principally for personal careerist reasons, domestic politics, to avoid being embarrassed, Psychologists refer to something called a sunk cost fallacy. And I think we see a, a great example of it in Indochina. We can't get out now. We have to stay in if only to, to, to justify all those lives that have been lost. We just cannot now dishonor our word or abandon our commitment. What this tragic, bloody, and difficult story tells us is that the political utility of military force is ultimately severely limited. So what we have in this instance is two massively superior armies, first France and then the United States, being unable to impose their will on the Vietnamese. And I think that has very important implications for our current day. Ultimately, wars have to be won politically if they're going to be won at all. The Pentagon protest was less violent in its second day of sitting in. The two-day protest ends with... And that, to me, is a very troubling conclusion, especially when we think about the fact that three million 
Vietnamese died in this struggle. Some 100,000 French Union troops perished, and more than 58,000 Americans. I did feel when I started the project, and one of the reasons that I was excited about the project from the beginning, really right through to the end, even though it took 11 years, I did have a, um, a kind of um, burning a conviction, a sense that I really had to write this book. I think I felt that the Vietnam literature was huge, it was informative, much of it was excellent, but we didn't really have a book that explained how the whole thing happened. Um, and what I wanted was for Embers of War to be that book, to really put this in a, in a way that, um, that I thought was doing justice to the complexity of the story, but also told what I think is actually a really interesting, fascinating uh, story with a large cast of characters making life and death decisions involving millions of people. That's what I wanted to do with the book, and I hope I succeeded.